The Japanese automotive industry trumpets the fact that they have created 98,000 new jobs at transplant facilities and related facilities in the United States. It's marvelous. The only difficulty is, in the same period of time, the American auto industry lost a half million jobs. So there has been no net gain in automotive employment. There has been a 400,000 job decline in that industry. Seven Japanese automakers built plants in the Midwest. They were quickly followed by their Japanese suppliers. Six years ago, there were only 24 Japanese auto parts suppliers in America. By next year, there will be nearly 300. It is no accident. The migration was encouraged by the industrial policy of the Japanese government. We claim to not have industrial policy, but every state in the Union has an industrial policy, and it is to screw other states. What's the implications of that? Well, it seems to me that it's, this gives the Japanese a tremendous opportunity to play one state off against the other. They go over and they say, look, I got tax money, I can give you $200 million, come locate, because I've got to worry in my state about jobs. Why do these individual states compete with each other to get jobs, but the U.S. in total doesn't worry about jobs? See, Michigan has an industrial policy. These states have an industrial policy, but the U.S. says, oh, no, no, that gets in the way of our ideology. To convince Honda to locate in Ohio, the state gave Honda incentives worth over $60 million to build its Marysville complex. As part of the deal, Honda won't have to pay property taxes for 15 years. The Marysville plant led the boom in Honda's U.S. sales that has permanently changed the shape of the industry. Today, in American passenger car sales, the big three are GM, Ford, and Honda. They go into a cornfield. They don't go into any ghettos. They don't want any of the problems, okay? And what do they do? They have uh, young people, farm boys they bring in. They're healthy. They don't use health care. They won't have a pension problem for 20 to 25 years because they're so young. You take those two loads and say, well, why don't you do that? Why don't you wipe out all your plants and start over again? Now, wait a minute. I got a workforce in downtown Detroit. I'm putting a billion dollars in that. Japanese would never do that. But at some point, you got to weigh what your obligations are to, to, the, to your company, to your city, states, to society. Japanese come in clean and say, no, no, we're not going we're not gonna buy your problems. We're going over here. Chrysler's problems are real and their implications ominous. The company is saddled with old factories in inner cities. The average age of its workers is over 40. And at a time when losses are mounting, Chrysler owes its workers' pension fund over $3 billion. If all the jobs go, the tax base erodes. Forget forget making a buck and, and eating and sleeping well, who's going to take care of the roads and the environment? Who pays for all this stuff if there's nothing left to tax? That's why any country who doesn't protect its industrial base is crazy. This is for your, for your headlight covers. Power mirrors and a door. You elect a side, right or left. This is for your fog lights. The next uh, circle dial behind you is uh, temperature control. Blue is cold, red is hot. Christina Schindeldecker is buying a new car. Inside now... She's unhappy with her old one, a Plymouth from Chrysler. My dad told me a lot about Japanese cars. He said that they're made very well. She's decided to buy a Mitsubishi Eclipse. How'd you like that? That looks great. Is a nice car? Very nice. Very nice. But sometimes the difference between Japanese and American cars is less than consumers think. In fact, the Mitsubishi Eclipse is identical to this car, the Plymouth Laser. They're both manufactured in the same factory in Illinois. Yet in America, the Mitsubishi Eclipse outsells the Plymouth Laser two to one. <laughs> Consumer demand for Japanese cars, built in modern factories subsidized by state tax incentives, is accelerating the decline of the U.S. auto industry and the jobs that depend on it. The states are unfortunately engaging in um, self-destructive competition. Clyde Prestowitz is a former Commerce Department official and an expert on Japanese business. They are being played off one against the other. Um, and they are, uh, in a sense, subsidizing the um, destruction of a large part of the U.S. auto and auto parts industry. Do the Japanese think we're fools? Yes. 
you answer? The short right? answer is yes. Uh, I can't tell you how many times Japanese from the government, Japanese from academia, Japanese from industry, say to me, Presto with son, don't you Americans know what's happening to you? And it's not just Japanese. I've had the same comment from Koreans, from Singaporeans, from Hong Kong Chinese, from Taiwanese, from Frenchmen, from Germans. The rest of the world thinks we are absolutely nuts. Let me underscore that this is a public informal hearing, which is not... The world finds U.S. trade policy a bit crazy because it gives American business few weapons to fight the trade war with Japan. Without fair pricing in the marketplace, the industry will not fulfill its potential. Indeed, it may not survive its infancy. The petitioners so the at this Commerce Department hearing know how tough a fight it can be. They claim Japanese dumping or selling below cost destroyed their industry. They represent the last remaining U.S. manufacturers of flat panel display screens, which are most commonly used in laptop computers. But the future possibilities are vast. There are many areas into which this technology will go. It's not just computers. We're going to have flat panel displays for our television sets. We're going to have flat panel displays in our automobiles. Radar screens in, in uh, control towers and in aircraft are going to be flat panel displays. Medical imaging is going to be flat panel display. It's going to be a pervasive technology. Dominance of that flat panel display technology is going to be a big step towards achieving dominance in laptop computers, television sets, radar displays, automobile displays, <laughs> medical displays, and so forth. So this is a critical component we're talking it's about. It's a very important component. This is a very difficult case and a very critical industry. And the flat panel case is in its 11th month of hearings, economic studies, and legal briefs. It is a slow process. On page F3, under the listing property and equipment net, uh, the business of dumping is highly technical. Few understand the mechanics, and even those who do often have trouble defining the terms. See, you accept the concept of, of partial BIA. Or you Proof is often difficult to obtain, and every point subject to endless interpretation. In order to go into a yield calculation, the material has to go through the end of the process. While the hearings and appeals drag on, the dumping and the damage continue. The technology was invented by American companies 30 years ago. But it was Japanese companies, with the support of their government, that spent the billions necessary to create the industry. The Japanese now control 90% of the market. They are charged with selling their screens for as little as one-third what it costs to make them. And they have spared no expense defending against the charges. We estimate that the Japanese spent more at one hearing and we have budgeted for our entire case. For the whole case? For the entire case. I would say probably we're going to be outspent about 100 to 1. If there is a pool effort, and this, of course, we have seen in the camera industry, we have seen it in the home electronics industry, we've seen it in the car industry. If there is a concerted effort for international market share, Japanese large corporations are virtually unbeatable. Carol Van Wolferen is a Dutch business journalist who lives in Japan. Since large Japanese corporations do not go bankrupt, it means they can always, in their campaigns for market share, outcompete everybody else. They'll always win. It means that American or European companies cannot really compete. <laughs> Is there going to be a thing that was going to blow? Uh -huh. Oh, good shot. Oh. Jim Hurd is a classic American success story. Eight years ago, he saw the opportunity to create a new product. He founded Planar Systems of Beaverton, in Oregon. Now the nation's largest maker of flat panel displays. Hurd wants to compete for the booming laptop computer market. Yet despite Planar's success, he can't find investors. If you're a, uh, an entrepreneur, 